Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Science 7 which is all about earthquake modeling. This will be the fourth quarter topic on learning competency number 5. This lesson is under the Matatag curriculum. Objectives. By the end of the lesson, 80% of the learners will be able to First is to describe how earthquake magnitude relates to the intensity of ground shaking The second one is to create a model to represent the anatomy of an earthquake And the third one is to appreciate the importance of understanding fault line behavior for earthquake preparedness and disaster response by answering the reflection of learning. In activating the prior knowledge for the short review, the learners will label the anatomy of the earthquake by choosing the answer from the pool of words below the picture. Following is to understand the epicenter and the focus. So the focus, it is the point within the Earth's crust where the earthquake originates. It's where the rupture starts and energy is released. Whereas the epicenter, it is the point of the Earth's surface directly above the focus. It's the location where the earthquake's effects are felt most intensively. The following is to understand what is seismic wave and fault. So fault, this is the fractures or the cracks in the Earth's crust where the tectonic plates meet and move relative to one another. So these fault lines are the source of earthquakes as the sudden movement and release of build-up stress along the fault causes the ground to shake while the seismic waves so when an earthquake occurs the sudden movement and the release of energy along a fault line generates seismic waves it is a vibration that travel through the earth's interior and crust the following are the earthquake intensity and magnitude. So magnitude, it is the total energy released during an earthquake. It is measured using scales like the Richter or the moment magnitude scales. While the intensity, it is the measure of the ground shaking experience at the particular location. It is measured on scales like the modified Mercalli and intensity scale. The following are the tsunamis from underwater earthquakes. So the first one is the thrust fault. So a type of fault where rocks on one side of the fault push up and over the rocks on the other side. The second one is the seafloor displacement. So the movement of the seafloor during an earthquake can create large waves called tsunamis. And the third one is the tsunami waves. So the wave travels across the ocean and can cause significant damage when it reaches the shore. The following is to understand what is fault lines. So the first one is the convergence. So the plates collide creating mountains, volcanoes, and earthquakes. The second one is the divergent. So plates move apart creating new crust and drift valleys. And the last one is transform. So plates slide each other causing earthquakes along fault lines. 
the following or the earthquake prediction. So the first one is the seismic monitoring. Scientists use network of seismometers to detect and measure the earthquake waves. The second one is the GPS measurements. So GPS stations monitor the ground movement and providing insights into fault behavior. And the third one is data analysis. So analyzing data helps identify patterns and predict potential earthquake occurrences. The following are the earthquake preparedness. So the first one is to secure your home. So reinforce structures, secure heavy objects, and develop a safety plan. The second one is to prepare an emergency kit. So gather supplies like food, water, first aid, and communication devices. The third one is to stay informed. So subscribe to emergency alerts and learn about earthquake safety and procedures and the last one is to practice drills so conduct regular earthquake drills to ensure everyone knows what to do for the work example the students will answer the activity called modeling earthquake scenarios